This Czech Republic car manufacturer was established in 1925 and they test their horns for the car 150,000 times for the European market. I thought that was a lot. But if they're going to sell them to India, they test these horns half a million times. This is due to the increased horn usage in that country. One study has claimed a car horn can be heard every three seconds at an intersection. They obviously do not hold back. I'll be honest though, I do have a weird opinion that car horns is an effective tool that we don't use often enough. Sometimes it's good to let the other person know, hey, I'm here, buddy. I'm coming to my lane. Ten years ago, Disney attempted to trademark the centuries-old Mexican holiday Dia de los Muertos. They did eventually decide to drop the bid there. How could they think that was a good idea? Are they trying to do it before they released Coco? Imagine if China's Huawei just randomly tried to trademark Halloween. I would literally lose my mind. In 1969, North Korea shot down a U.S. spy plane. Enraged, the U.S. president the time Nixon ordered a tactical nuclear strike and told the Joint Chiefs to recommend targets. <laughs> what? They ultimately ended up deciding to wait until Nixon sobered up the next morning. What's hilarious about this is this is not the first time we've considered nuking this country. It is widely known in the history meme community that Douglas MacArthur also suggested the same thing, just nuke all up here. He was attempting to make a sea of irradiated coal bait. This would have helped by stopping the Chinese from continuing to aid North Korea during the Korean War. The thing is, the Korean War was in the year 1950. Like, only five years after we made the first nuke. Like, I know it was still a horrible idea, but, you know, it, it, we were still new to the whole policy of nukes. I'm sure we were kind of still discovering all the different aspects on why we should not use them. But this event with Nixon was in 1969, like 20 years after that. It was even like seven years after the Cuban Missile Crisis, arguably the closest we ever got to destroying the entire globe. I feel like this is even more meme-worthy, to be honest. This ship, the US USS Kidd is the only U.S. Navy ship permitted to fly the Jolly Roger. Man, how they get so lucky? The Jolly Roger obviously being kind of like a pirate black flag used. This little boat here is also the final U.S. destroyer in its original configuration from WW2. It's now a museum in Louisiana. In WW2, when Germans captured this British bomber tail gunner, he claimed he jumped out of his plane at 5,500 meters without a parachute. They investigated his story and confirmed his claim. They gave him a certificate for it. Technically, that was 18,000 feet. His fall was broken by pine trees and soft snow cover on the ground. It's kind of crazy how often this has happened, but I'm still not going to take any chances. I'm, I'm not going skydiving anytime soon. He was a celebrated prisoner of war before being repatriated. Um, you don't hear that too often. I feel like I'd only want to go skydiving over a country like Finland or something. Looks like you can pretty much drop anywhere and survive that. There's literally a highest fall survived without a parachute Wikipedia article. Of course, the man we just discussed is on this one right here from 1944. But the highest ever was this Serbian flight attendant that fell 33,000 feet. This somewhat tiny island in the nation of Indonesia contains 2% of the entire global population. Believe it or not, there are more people here on the island of Java than in all of Russia. And Russia is the biggest country on Earth by far. Basically, one out of every 50 people live right here. Jakarta, also located on the island, is one of the biggest cities in the world, likely to be the biggest ever. Currently sitting at about 10 million at the moment, but due to Indonesia's population projection, there's going to be a lot more people living there soon. I have read it is possible they will be passing up the U.S. in population in the next couple decades. It is, however, kind of difficult to define what a city is, like the bigger city, the sprawl, the, you know what I mean? Maybe Jakarta has a little bit longer to go to be the biggest city, but it's possible. Especially with a place like Tokyo in Japan, which is supposed to face depopulation. It's funny because considering the topography of Indonesia, you wouldn't think that there would be a majority of people living there, but it is notoriously difficult to fit people in Borneo. I'm sure some of this has to do with port cities. Obviously, this is a nice waypoint, just like Singapore has all those ships moving through there. It really feels like the biggest islands in Indonesia don't really have that many people on it. It's mainly the medium to smaller sized ones, surprisingly. The the majority of the continent of Europe lies even more north than our U.S. state of Maine. Of course, there are spots below this 45 degree line like Italy, Greece, Spain, but then pretty much everything else is way above that. I think this mainly surprises 
Americans because when they think of Maine, they think, wow, it's pretty cold there. Same idea when it comes to Toronto, Ottawa, parts of Canada, lots of Canada. However, temperature functions very differently across the Atlantic, whereas most of Canada is like a frozen tundra. Uh, the Europeans are living great over here. I mean, obviously it still gets cold. Just not as much. You could still live there. The vast majority of men that live in Germany sit to pee. And there's a lot of other European countries that share this too. And this is a very weird thing for Americans. Uh, I think most men stand. Urinal culture, I think, kind of trains you to do that. Never thought I'd say that. Urinal culture. There are other countries that have sizable portions of their male population that do this, but nothing like Germany. I mean, this is a really solid majority. The next closest place is Sweden at 50. I wonder what our numbers are at the US, because I don't even think a third of our men sit to pee. But if you think about it, like, I do get the concept. It does seem a lot cleanlier, I have to say. No chance of a splash. In Japanese sumo wrestling, women are traditionally prohibited from entering the ring. This tradition is so strictly enforced that in 2018, two women were asked to leave the ring even though they were performing CPR on a man. That seems, uh, that seems a little extreme. Like, I get it this happened in the 70s or something, but, man, that was only five years ago. Maybe they should update some of those policies. The average through hiker on the Appalachian Trail spends about 10,000 US dollars during their five-month hike. What? Five times 30 days on average each month. That's 150. So why are they spending so much each day? Apparently it's about 65 a day, and that is because uh, freeze-dried food is expensive. Oh yeah, you are probably eating a lot. I guess when we think of hiking, we don't think about hiking for five months straight. Like on average, you know, we go on a hike for what, three, four, five hours. Um, that's not a full day though. Also on average, these long distance hikers are in their early 20s. Weird how it drops off at 40, then kind of kicks back up at 50, 51. That just reminds me of how like the first person to swim from Cuba to Florida was like a 65 year old woman. She had tried several times to do that, but it's crazy this happened. There's a really good movie about that. Interestingly, on average, almost half of the long distance hikers have a bachelor's degree. Like, what? You would think they wouldn't have anything. I don't know why. <laughs> so weirdly, hikers are just really educated? I guess you have to be pretty smart to be able to hike for five months, have all the resources. Of course, the vast majority of hikers are coming from the states that are in the Appalachian Trail, but it's most popular from Massachusetts. This kind of makes sense if you look at the amount of universities in Massachusetts, too. It's a very, like, student school, Boston, a lot of famous universities. Maybe after school, they just, like, start walking. <laughs> they don't know what else to do. 26% of the people that do the long distance hike, um, before they did that, they only did one to three nights of backpacking. That, what? You practice for three days and you're like, I'm, I'm ready for five months. The biggest thing that stops the hikers is usually an injury at 33%, but also 22% only intended to walk a certain part of the trail, not the full thing. Most people are actually doing northbound. Why did I think it would be southbound from Georgia to Maine? Don't you kind of got to consider like the weather and the, you know, obviously temperature conditions? To go northbound, the optimal time is between April 15th and the first week of May. Then you have five months from there. So you'd be hitting like Maine around fall. I guess it wouldn't be too cold. Before the U.S. invasion of Granada 40 years ago, the Pentagon knew so little about the country, it had to plan using maps normally sold to tourists, which I myself have to admit, I don't know too much about the geography of Granada. I feel like that's reasonable though for like islands, especially when they're not densely populated, like for instance, Java. <laughs> Indonesia. Everyone knows about that. What a scary thing to do to send your task force in not really knowing what they're getting into. I guess luckily those tourist maps um, had enough down for this invasion. At least they got the you know coastline right. I feel like we always forget though like in the pre-internet days it was hard for people to know exactly what the world looked like. Like yes we did know what the world looked like. like we had it all discovered and everything. But like for the average person you know you could get like a globe but but you don't necessarily know if those political borders are correct, which partially explains why you see some wacky borders in cartoons. And that's when talking about like a world map or a globe. Like, can you imagine a small island like this? They probably knew it was there, but what was there? Pfft. Beats me. Here's the Earth's 12 largest subdivisions, or basically like a state, a province, uh, I mean, what else do you call it? County, even? So first we got the Northwest Territories from Canada, 1.35 million kilometers squared. Then there's the Northern
Northern Territory out of Australia. The Quebec province of Canada, which is 1.54 million kilometers squared. You'll notice a theme here with these subdivisions. A lot of the times they don't have a large portion of population. That's not always the case though. The Amazonas out of Brazil, this place in East China. There is Alaska, our biggest US state, but that's still nowhere near the absolute biggest. Another Australia. Australia just doesn't want to divide themselves up all really tiny like. Nunavut out of Canada. There's Greenland. Everyone forgets the Greenland is technically a subdivision. They're owned by Denmark. This middle part of Russia at 2.37 kilometers squared. Western Australia, they just throw all of it there. And then finally, Yakutia. I probably butchered that. 3 million kilometers squared. A lot of Russia, Australia, and Canada popping up on this list. What's interesting about the way countries divide up their own land is there's somewhat of a cultural and historical significance to it. I mean, all the states in the East Coast are significantly smaller than the ones in the West because they started off as the 13 colonies. They were all much more tiny. Then with Manifest Destiny, as we expanded West, we're just making big old chunks. We probably knew that, you know, we can't keep like trying to squeeze in 13 tiny states into like just Idaho, for example. We're going to end up having like 250 total states. And then definitely population density certainly has something to do with it. That's the case for Russia. A lot of their population is in the West and a lot less out here in the East. So there's some of the two biggest subdivisions right there. Same for China as you go out more towards the West. I do find it pretty fascinating the way Australia decided to divide themselves up. It feels like they didn't want to think too hard about it. They're just like, uh, whatever. Winston Churchill had a doctor's note to drink unlimited alcohol in the U.S. during Prohibition. It was obviously before he was leading. It was 1932. And here is that note written January 26th. <laughs> Winston S. Churchill necessitates the use of alcohol spirits, especially at mealtimes. The quantity is naturally indefinite. There is, however, a minimum requirement, though. Okay, wow. Now, this is an awesome doctor. My doctor did this. Well, I mean, he doesn't have to, but do you think he just came over to the U.S. to like clown on us? Just like, ah, you dumb Americans, you, you can't do this. I think about it, a lot of Britain was probably laughing at us during that time. There's actually maps I've seen of Americans during this time escaping to the U.K. so they could drink again. There's a town in Alaska called Whittier where nearly the entire population lives in one building. The town's public facilities are also inside of it as well. You didn't think Alaska was already a pretty interesting place. Uh, well, here you go. It's actually not even that far away from Anchorage. Like, you could get there reasonably. The nickname of this place is Town Under One Roof. That's nice. There's only 196 apartments there. Man, that must be a crazy place to live. You know everyone in the town. You all live in the same place. You get to party it up. What happens when you have to vote? Man, I really want to visit here now. And big thanks to the patrons. Drew, I'm your dad back with the milk. Look outside. John Denver. Luxembourg lover. I can't sleep without Drew's voice. Aaron F. Amateur archaeology. Normal S. Frederick Tiblin, Good old Ryan. Inquisitor Jack Trigger's annoying friend. Let me know is X10. Best Robert Ryan. E. The Pie. The Sebby, if you hear this, I love you. And why am I doing this?